public notice, um, over the last X number of years I've had recurring digestive tract problems, upper respiratory problems, anything associated with a mucous membrane, eye sockets, everything. And this makes it to where I cough, gag, I can't do anything about it. And medically speaking, it's not bad enough or specific enough to treat. Next, this causes me to have a physiological condition very similar to clinical depression because my digestive system and my body are all going, oh my god, we don't have any energy. And this can be debilitating and deadly in some cases, and I have a couple of relatives with this problem, and it has caused them to become very, very sick to the point that they've had to be hospitalized. Not recently, but this is a problem that does happen. So, next. I just had to tell the computer to stop playing around and put priority to this video recorder. So anyway, something bad happened today. It made me sad. But I don't know if it's the digestive problem or not because it also included fear and dread and I feel hopeless because a predator got into my camp because it's a forest, obviously that would eventually happen. And even though I tacitly and subconsciously understood that this could happen, I feel like I'm a coward for running away from it when I can't catch it. It's, it's a high-speed moving tiny predator that's trying to kill my little friends. Leaving the scene means that the animals will leave the area and be less likely to be killed, but I feel like I've abandoned them. And they were all very sad because I left, even though they knew, and they were able to physically see this little tiny predator attacking other squirrels or chipmunks in the area, and heard the noise, didn't matter to them because they're tougher than I am. So I get through all that. And then when I'm not having this digestive problem, I'm back to not being depressed anymore. Now, why am I bringing this up? This is something real world that happened today. It's a bunch of confounding things that are subject to interpretation by anybody watching. And none of their interpretations are really important unless they're helpful to me. Anybody attempting to make this into some other thing, they're not going to get banned or anything. It just shows that they're pathetic people. If you see a person explaining to you, today I almost cried, today I was sick, today I saw some poor little animal get hurt, and they decide to jump on you because they want to prove to everybody in the comment section that they're a stereotypical whatever. That doesn't reflect badly on me or any else that might be helpful. It reflects badly on the person who's doing that because they see it as a sign of weakness or an opportunity to just screw with people. Now why have I wasted the last three minutes? This is an explanation of any general attitudinal problem you might have seen today and maybe in other videos where it appears like I look like I'm just about ready to give up and, and do something crazy. If anybody's curious, I am, a, what is the joke uh, that the people at the um, clinic told me once because I came in wondering if I'm suicidal because I get depressed once in a while but it's always this medical problem I didn't know at the time. They said, you're physiologically incapable of killing yourself because what you've described and what we can look up from your medical records, most people would be considering suicide on a rather regular basis. You've never really thought about it. And I never really did. I only felt misery, but I never thought of dying because I know misery, even if it's chronic, I can ignore any level of pain, which is the other reason I'm having a problem right now and the reason I'm doing this video. That's sort of a punchline at the four minute mark. The position I'm in, sitting against a piece of cement, I'm able to ignore for an extended period of time because I've literally spent a week with my leg split open because I didn't lose my leg, it just had to heal from the inside out. You can imagine what that's like. I've learned to ignore every form of misery in my life. Not because I've gotten an extra helping of it or anything. I mean, really, I haven't. I've, I've been. I live in a world where everything is a lot better than it really could have been. But I end up having what I think are broken ribs because I'm too stupid to roll over when I'm in pain because I don't sense the pain anymore. That's not tough. That's stupid. And in this case, um, a lot of this is self-inflicted in my life from stupidity. Not a brilliant person. If you are feeling like you want the world to end and everything else to end, some of these people take a way out where they take others with them. 
Some take themselves out only, and some, like me and maybe you, figure out that there's no point in doing that because that won't make anything better because you won't realize things can get better. If you're on that edge, don't. Just don't. So the clinical depression I was feeling today from watching one of my little squirrel friends get injured, it was a chipmunk, and me not giving in to that by feeling bad all day was contradicted by my digestive tract and every other thing that I was born with and gained over time damaging me getting on my nerves today, making me feel sad. So if I've appeared to be sad in any of the videos on any of the three channels, I am publicly apologizing if I've brought you down. I'm only going to post it to this channel because honestly, I'm still freaking exhausted and I felt like I was going to die a few hours ago. Oh my god, I didn't get any sleep last night. Yes, I did. My body just decided, you need to take a nap right now. And then something else terrible happens. Hey, I didn't throw up. And it's not just getting old, it's it's other stuff. And yeah, there's a treatment for it, and uh, unless you can live indoors or stay at a hospital for a week, you can't do anything about it. And uh, I'm going to try to arrange for this to happen somehow, because I'm getting tired of this. Literally, physiologically tired. So, um, I have a video I'm going to do about the three faces, four actually, of people talking about a particular subject today. One of them is a multi-faced individual, not multifaceted. Um, so I'll be doing that in a minute. Just sharing, oversharing probably. And if anybody's curious, uh, the solution I've come up with to prevent the weasel, literally a variety of weasel from harming my little friends is to make sure that my camp is no longer interesting to it by not camping in that exact location. If I move a couple of hundred feet east, west, north, or south, it won't be up an attracting point and it won't find a easy set of pickings. Or as easy. I don't want to wake up in the morning hearing the sounds of little animals being killed. Can't do anything about that. That happens all over the world. I'm just going to make it to where it's much less likely by me not being a cause of it inadvertently by trying to be nice to my little friends. And public disclosure, yes, when you feed little animals to entice them to come near so you can take pictures of them, or because you want to be friends with them and they do love you back. A lot of, a lot of you don't realize this, but almost every wild animal does really appreciate humans. They don't understand from the life of them why you do it. Even your dog or cat may not have any clue why you're so nice to them, but they do appreciate you. Especially if they're a gregarious creature, like chipmunks and squirrels, or your bunny rabbit friends, or whatever. Hell, maybe butterflies appreciate it. So that it's not your imagination, they do actually appreciate you. But they're still cautious of you. But when you do that, you are kind of being selfish, like I am, like I was, and I can't do it anymore. I can't give them any of that. Even if it does make them healthier, it makes them live longer because it puts them in a dangerous position of being used to me and used to other humans and letting their guard down anywhere is bad. That includes in the city park. Just saying. That's why I did a video called Don't Feed the, the Cute Little Animals because you're also feeding their worst type of predators. The revenge theory, uh, when things bite back, it's, uh, it's the idea that you know if you make a, a highway with more lanes in it, it does slow down traffic because you get more traffic. Traffic still just doesn't change in speed or functionality or efficiency. The more you put in lights, you're better off you are with roundabouts. Because you are. <laughs> they actually do work better than the light system. But anyway, I just thought I'd share all that. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And hope that this um, hasn't depressed you. And again, if you're thinking that life isn't worth living, it is.